Hello, family and friends. Tonight we're going to be talking about a subject that's close to my heart. And uh, I've done a very short teaching on this one before. But due to some experiences that I've had in the past um, and encounters with a various group of people, I think it's time for us to do this again. So before we start, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that um, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And Lord, that as we teach the word of God, we just thank you that the people that hear this and watch this video will get revelation in their hearts, Lord, because the word of God is important to us. And as we teach the word, we teach it with truth, understanding, and context so that people can understand what you say to us in your word. And we thank you for this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Tonight we're going to be talking about the dangers of listening to false doctrine, false teachers, and self-appointed uh, prophets. So firstly, when we talk about this, people go, don't judge. You shall not judge. As you judge, you will be judged. So here's the thing. The th the Bible is very clear. Jesus gives us a command, very important command. Um, and I'd like for us to um, go to Galatians 1, chapter 5, but it says, but even Paul writes and he says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you another gospel that is contrary to that which we originally preached to you, let him be accursed. So now we got to look at this and say, hmm, hold on. What, 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 what is he saying? And if we go to Ephesians 5, verse 11, it says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. There are so many people out there that say they are Christians, but they don't want people to be named. You know, like the false teachers that are on, on television okay let's christian television so the thing we got to understand is there are people out there that are teaching heresy they false teachers it's all about the money it's all about things that are are happening in the world today it's all about self enrichment it's all about believing that we are gods and we can we can think it and we can profess it, and we can um, proclaim it, and it will all come to pass. And we believe that because the false teachers are out there teaching the flock. My brothers and sisters in Christ that are out there, they are teaching them and leading them astray. And the problem is, some of the people are too gullible and don't know the word of God to be able to know what is right, what is wrong, what is biblical, what is unbiblical, um, simply because they don't know the word of God. Reading the Bible is good. We all need to read the Bible. But studying the word of God is more important. You know, the Bible tells us that we must study and show ourselves approved. And Ephesians 5 and 11 is very to the point. For... We have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, not it or what they do, expose those. You see, Jesus says, do not be deceived. And in the last days, even the elect will be deceived. Ephesians 5.13, the next verse, it says, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light so we got to understand that the more we understand what is being taught out there that is wrong that is false um some teachers must teach a subject that's fine i'm not talking about that i'm talking about those teachers that are out there that purposefully teach heresy false doctrine they twist the scriptures to support their narrative. Ephesians 5 verse 14 says, Therefore he says, Awake you that sleep, 
and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things they do in secret. You see, to have five jets or 15 jets with multi-million rands, to have all these mansions that the people are living in, and you know what? They never worked for it. All of their wealth comes off the giving of the saints. But here's the thing. We started off in the in the beginning when it says Jesus gives us a command. Every single word that Jesus teaches in the, in the scripture is so important that we understand that every single passage of scripture is God-breathed. Okay? We're going to get to that scripture now. Now, we need to understand that when Jesus says, I don't want you to follow false teachers. I don't want you to follow self-proclaimed um, prophets. Okay? It's a, it's in a commandment. Jesus, through Paul, and Paul says he doesn't want women teaching. That's not Paul. Jesus gave them, the apostles, the commands. And Paul made it clear. He doesn't want anybody, no woman, teaching. To be a, 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 a pastor or, or whatever that, that teaches. Because that's not applicable for us. Jesus commanded it. Paul endorsed it. We read it and we understand it. But then, hold on a second, the people out there are saying, hang on, we're living in a different time. Of course we're allowed to have women. Of course women pastors can preach. My church has got a woman pastor. She's good. You must hear. She got many people saved. But you know what? No matter how many women pastors you got in there, you are not obeying the command of God. No pastors in the church that are women. Simple. Just deal with it. You can't make excuses and say, well, I'm going to obey this, but I'm not going to obey that. Because then what are you doing? You're lukewarm. You are not applying the word of God to your life. John 14 verse 15, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus gives us commandments in his Bible all the time. Last week, we, we, we dealt on, on John 15, and I want to touch on John 15 very quickly. Um, give me a second. John 15. It's a beautiful passage of Scripture. And it says, "My I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. We spoke about this last week, but I, I think it's important that we read it because it Jesus talks about commands, these commandments. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So if Jesus speaks the word to us, <clears throat> and we need to be born again in John 3, John 3, 3, it tells us we must be born again. So he says we are clean because of really the word. Abide in me. That word abide means live. Live in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it lives in the vine neither can you unless you live in me jesus is saying i am the vine jesus says and you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me jesus says you can do nothing we can do nothing without jesus we can't bear any fruit if anyone does not live in me he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you live in me and my words, the words, the Bible, the scriptures live in you, that means us, you, us, <laughs> will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, 
so you will be my disciples as my father loved me. I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no uh, one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So what are we talking about here? Jesus is talking about commandments. Okay? If, if you keep my commandments, many commandments, okay, you will abide or live in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments. God gives us commandments in his word. One of the commandments is no woman pastors, no woman teachers. Sorry, that's not how it is. That's the way it is. That's a commandment of God. In Luke 6.46, it says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Obey his commandments. Why is it that people don't obey his commandments? Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you live in my word, commandments, you are my disciples indeed. If we obey the commands of Jesus, we are his disciples. In John 14, verse 23, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father, my word is commandments, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home in him. John 15 says, they will come and live in us, and we will live in him. And it says, if you keep my commandments, verse 10, John 15, verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and live in his love. You see, the importance of the word of God is to obey Christ. It's to obey the commandments that's in the word. This book, the Bible, is our manual it's for us to learn how to live by the word. The church of Christ is so uninformed and deceived. Why? Why is this? Because our Christian TV networks are filled with false teachers that teach heresy and false doctrine. And it's easily, it's lapped up, it's absorbed. Wow, did you hear this guy? He said this. Did you hear this woman? She said this and 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 and. But they don't take the Bible and see. The Bible says, test every spirit. But now I'm too lazy. Oh, that's great. I don't have to test that. That sure oh, sounds so great. But it's heresy. It's false doctrine. And we read earlier in where it says that... Um, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather expose them. I'm not exposing anybody tonight. I'm just telling us as the body of Christ. Wake up. Study your Bible. Know your Bible. You have to know your Bible. Otherwise you will be deceived. I was deceived for many years. I just took for granted that what the pastor said was the truth. Some of it was. But a lot of it wasn't. And I was deceived. And I got angry because I was deceived. But then I studied the Bible and then I discovered, whoa, hold on a second. There are a lot of things here that don't make sense to me. That's not what it really means. The pastor said that, uh -uh, that doesn't, that's not right. You see, we got to test the spirit by taking the word of God. Don't believe everybody. Don't believe what he or the pastor or the, or the false teacher says. Don't believe it. Don't believe anybody. Only believe the word of God, which is the Holy Bible. If you study that Bible, it will give you truth. Jesus says in John 46, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto me or unto the Father. Sorry, no man comes unto the Father except by me. The truth. Jesus is the truth. The gospel of Christ is the truth. Jesus is the way, the only way. And it says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
eternal life. Jesus gives us the eternal life. But you watch Christian TV. There are many roads that lead to heaven, they say. We are gods, they say. We can speak it, we can believe it, we can meditate on it, and it will come to pass. And these false teachers that say that, that everybody's going to get healed, it's God's will for everybody to be healed. Answer me this question. If it's God's will for every single human being on this planet to be healed, we don't need doctors, we won't need hospitals, everybody will walk in this divine healing, everybody. But that's not the case. If you just open your eyes and you have a look outside, how many hospitals there are? How many people are sick? How many people are ill? How many people are dying? They are teaching false doctrine. Wake up and smell the roses. Don't believe everything you hear. Study the word of God. Yes, God does heal. I believe that God heals. I've seen personally, I've seen people that are healed, divinely healed. I've seen it with my own eyes, and I bear testimony to that. But God doesn't heal everybody when they demand healing. It doesn't work that way. And the false teachers say that you must have faith so you can get healed. And if you don't get healed, oh, it's your problem, not the pastor's fault. It's your problem because you don't have faith. Or you're not sowing enough money into their ministry. That's why you're not getting healed. Come on. Folks, wake up. We are in the end days. Bible says in the last days, perilous times will come. We are living in the last days. People are being conned, hoodwinked. There are charlatans out there. They 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 take money from, un, from, from people that really don't have the knowledge of the word of God because they're too lazy to study it. We have read what the scripture says. There are serious consequences when we are in constant disobedience to God. So here's a question. I put on the TV network, Christian TV network, and I, I see all these people that are there. You know who they are. And this guy teaches this, and this guy teaches that, and this guy teaches that. And we say, stop. What does the Bible say? Whoa. Hold on. Hold on. God spoke to him personally. Okay. Immediately, there's a red flag. God speaks to us through his, his word, the Holy Bible. God speaks to us. So, for me personally, I'm very careful who I listen to. I'm very careful who I lend my ear to. There are a few people that I listen to, and they are steadfast in the word Bible teachers. They don't belong to a religion. They are the word of God teachers. Sound doctrine teachers. Those are the people that I listen to. And when people rebuke me for saying, oh, I am too uh, judgmental. I mustn't judge anybody. They are also Christians. What does the word of God say? Ephesians 5.11. And have no fellowship. Have no fellowship. That doesn't mean, that means listening to them, watching them on TV, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So when we do the word of God and we say, don't listen to that guy, don't listen to that guy, don't listen to that woman, these people are leaving you astray. They're wanting you to believe in something that's not in the Bible. I'm sorry, I may be a little bit excited, but it, it makes me sad when people just don't want to see the light. God wants us to be totally committed to him, to be obedient, to obey his word, to obey his commands. Revelation 3, 15, 16 says, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you were lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. If we are lukewarm Christians, lukewarm Christians, oh, excuse me, he will vomit us out of his mouth. That's what it actually means. Don't let people watch false teachers. They are deadly to the body of Christ. Their teachings will make you disobedient to the word of God. They will 
help you or or twist the word of God so that you can accept it. You're drinking tainted water. You're listening to tainted doctrine, false doctrine by false teachers, charlatans, all they want. Every time they come on TV, money, 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 money. Send me your money. Send me your first fruits. The Bible says we are gods. We can, we can, we can call things. What well, they declare and decree, they say. We can declare and decree whatever we want in our lives. No, we can't, because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift us up. We can demand nothing from God. He has given us everything. He has given us eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus is our Lord, our Savior, is our Redeemer, is our Protector, is our Provider, is our Healer. We trust in him. Everything happens when God wants it to. Romans 8.28 says, all things happen for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We don't demand anything from God. We don't have the right to demand anything from God. But because of these charlatans, these false teachers, because of them, you believe you can challenge God. Hey, man, I want my healing now. Hey, I want this miracle now. Hey, I want an increase. I want a new job. I want this. I want, I want. It's all about I, I, I. Satanism is all about I, I, I. Lucifer was kicked out of heaven for one reason only, because he wanted to be like God. For the same reason that he was kicked out of heaven, these false teachers are telling you, you are like God. Think about it. We are like God, they say. No, we're not. We are not. We have our salvation through the works of the cross, through the death and resurrection, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They take the scripture and they twist it for their narrative to con you out of your money, to con you to believe bad things. Second Thessalonians 2, 3 verse says, let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Second Thessalonians is talking about the rapture. It's talking about the people. It's talking about the false prophet that comes. The, the son of perdition, the Antichrist will come. But it says that a falling away comes first. Okay. That means many people will leave the faith. They will be, um, I just want to quickly go to Second Thessalonians quickly. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. It says, that, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away, the defection, people leave the gospel. It's called apostasia in the Greek word. It means people walk away from the faith of Christ. And, and that's what's happening today. And who do we have to thank? All the false teachers, self-appointed apostles. It's all about them. It's not about you. They promise you wealth. They promise you healing. They promise you everything because that's what the Bible says, but it doesn't say that. And gullible people fall for the trick and nothing happens. Nothing happens. There are so many good people out there that I know that need to be saved. I pray every day they get saved. There are so many people that I know that need healing. And I pray, God, please, your grace and mercy upon those people. Let them heal them, please, Lord. We can only petition God's throne and say, God, have mercy. Please heal these people. We can keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying. But remember one thing. God decides who he heals, when he heals. Not us. But the charlatans are the ones that say, yes, follow me. Like me on Facebook, like me on YouTube, like me on this and like me on that, and everything will be okay. Send your money to me. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? Second Timothy 15, 16 says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word 
of truth. In essence, it means we must be diligent to present ourselves approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, and we know this Bible. Let's not be ashamed. Oh, I don't know what that means. Oh, does that really? Is that really in the Bible? Really? Is that in the Bible? Wow, I didn't know that. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to know this Bible. We need to study it. We need to know what's in there. Imagine you take your very expensive car to a garage and the car needs to be repaired. And the guy comes out, he's barely qualified. And they say, okay, he's going to fix your car. And you say, whoa, hold on a second. Okay, tell me about this. Tell me about this. Uh, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, I'm still studying, but I'll fix your car. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get it fixed. Are you going to leave your car there? I certainly won't. <laughs> I definitely won't. We must apply that same mental thinking. You can't just trust anybody. Don't trust anybody. Study the Bible. See what it says. When someone talks about a topic, go and study it up. Get yourself a good study Bible. There are good Bibles out there, but there's also bad Bibles. Okay, be careful. When you need to, to buy a Bible, to study and study Bible, make sure you go and buy the right Bible because even these Christian bookshops will sell you anything because it's a sale. Be careful. Don't be deceived. Um, uh, second part of that, 2 Timothy uh, 15, it says, but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase to more ungodliness. Okay. Vanity. We just look at all these false teachers are full of vanity. Me, me, me. I, I, I. Um, what is his name? The the he headed up the satanic church, Anton LaVey, said that that Satanism is about I. Satanism is about yourself. It's about me, myself, and I. You put yourself first in every situation. That's the start of Satanism because you don't believe in anything else except yourself. Self improvement, self awareness, self growth, achievement. You've got to be at the top of your game at all times. That's not what it's about. Second Timothy 3 16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In other words, all scripture is God breathed in another interpretation. So if all scripture is God breathed, it's inspired by God, it's given by God to us. Why is it that some people say, no, I'm, I don't want to listen to this. I don't believe that. I can nitpick what I want in the Bible. Because this pastor on TV said this, I'm going to believe him. You're fooling yourself. And he's the one that is planting the seed in your life. You don't have to obey the full word of God. You have to. Because the Bible says we must. All doctrine. All be. Uh, um, all scripture is given by an inspiration of God. All scripture is God breathed. So when Paul, we said early on, when Paul said he doesn't allow a woman to be in the church, to teach or whatever. That was God breathed. Okay. It's given by an inspiration of God. That's important. So if you want to kick that out and say, oh, 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 that's okay, I'll live with it. You are being disobedient to the word of God. When we walk in constant disobedience, we are in rebellion to God's word. We did earlier in John 15. If you obey, if you obey my commandments. Yeah? Very easy to understand. We need to obey all commandments that God gives us. Um, 2 Timothy 3.17, we're going to wrap up with this. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. 
but as for you, continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Be careful who you listen to. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith is in Christ Jesus. Evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They will deceive all the time, and they themselves are being deceived. They're this club of people that just support one another. Oh, yes, we are this, and yes, we are that. We are gods, and we can speak it, and no one can tell me anything otherwise. They nitpick little scriptures out of the Bible, but the rest they, no, they don't want it. So I hope that in what I've tried to explain to you tonight, I hope you take heed for yourself. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you, who you listen to. We just read that now in 2 Timothy 3.17. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived themselves. We can see that. It's all open. Put on a Christian TV channel and you'll see. Okay, but it says, but as for you, that's us, continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Trust a solid Bible-based teacher. Study your Bible. Know what the Bible says about love. Know what the Bible says about deception. Know what the Bible says about baptism. Know, about, know what the Bible says about healing. Know about it, what the Bible says about love, walking in love. And there's so much to learn. But start at a starting point, otherwise you are going to be deceived. Anyway, I think I've said what I've had to say. And I say this with love in my heart, with no animosity to anybody. Okay? But I'm just helping you to understand, obey all the commands of God. There is no man perfect. No, not one, the Bible says. For all men have fallen short of the glory of God. All men have sinned. 1 John 1, 9 tells us that when we stumble and we fall, we can come to him and ask him for forgiveness and he will forgive us. And when the Bible says, when the man says he has no sin, he's a liar. And the truth of the Father is not in him. I heard somebody on the teacher the other day says, I've never lied since I've been born again. I haven't sinned. Really? That's contrary to the word of God. That means he's telling God that, he, that the word of God is untrue. That's just one insy, twenty little thing that you can say, oh, hold on. He's saying that the word of God is untrue because he said when he got born again, he's never sinned. But yet the Bible says, if anyone says he has not sinned, he's a liar. Hmm? Anyway, God bless you richly. I hope that this message brings you to a place of thought, introspection, godly wisdom, godly understanding, so that, as Timothy says, we must be diligent to present ourselves approved to God. Don't wing it on a prayer. Exactly what the, what the scriptures say. 2 Timothy 2, 16, 15 and 16. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. This is the beautiful one. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God. Truth is Jesus. God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome day.